Guys, this is part three of the front wheel drive burnout car build series. If you're not sure what this is all about, I'm gonna put a link right, right around about here somewhere where you guys can have a little look to see what's... You wanna make some extra cash so you can buy more toys, quit your job, go on more holidays, or maybe build a monster truck. I've got you covered. Check out my course in the description and I'll show you how to make 100K profit a year. Just to recap, so far I've got the motor mounted, I've got the gearbox mounted on the front, so we've got drive, we've got the steering mechanism sorted out, I've got a disc brake on the rear so we can hold the brakes and rip a burnout. I want to find a way of fitting the batteries. The ESC is going to sit here I think so far. Batteries I think would be perfectly there. I found this little mount here from uh, one of these things here, Team CT80. So that can screw there. I'll put a couple of holes in the chassis there. I'm obviously, I'm going to have to cut this top plate here off to get them to go in. I'm going to have to mount a servo somewhere to activate the rear brakes. I've got to put this Traxxas ESC on so that I can use my standard remote. And then this switch here is going to be to operate the handbrake. So first things first, I've just got to whip this thing off. <laughs> oh, loads of room now. This is too easy. Subscribe and smash the bell button. Not to worry, we'll cut them off and put on some proper six millimeter connectors. And the good thing is actually, because these wires are quite long, we don't need to have it this long. So I can actually cut these off here and solder these on right down the bottom down here so we haven't got all these sort of spaghetti cables everywhere. All right, so normally you're supposed to tin this and this before you solder, meaning you put some solder on both joints first and you melt the two together. But this is such a tight joint, I can only just about get all that cable in there. So I'm going to try, I don't know if it's going to work or not, guys. I'm going to try and put that on first and then solder it on afterwards. It's got a hole there, so it may well take, we'll see. I think guys, it's actually worked. That's definitely not the way that you're supposed to do it, but it worked. Like and subscribe. All right, so I've got them all on now. Just a little bit of heat shrink over the top. All right, so next we've got to swap over the receiver, only because I want to use my own remote and I want the extra channel for the handbrake. By the way, if you're wondering what this is, it's brake cleaner. Brake cleaner makes a handy degreaser, but you've got to be careful because some brands melt plastic. We've got servo channel one. We've got speed controller channel two. All right, see if it works. All right, needs binding. So all you have to do, hold down the link button while you plug it in. Receiver flashes, hold the set button on the radio and turn it on. Oh, oh, does the power work? Oh, now a couple of you guys did comment saying that the gears sound really noisy, that they're meshed too tight, but they're not. Look, it might not be easy to see on the camera, but there's definitely a bit of slop there just because it's metal on metal. I've just noticed another problem. The bearing on the end of the diff here started to work its way out. So it's going to need a pin or something on there, maybe a little collar that goes from there to there, just to keep that from coming out. All right, let's see if it moves. Oh, 
going the wrong way. Not a problem. All you have to do is swap over a couple of the motor wires. You could only do this on sensorless systems. On sensored systems, you have to wire up A to A, B to B, C to C, and you have to change the rotation of the motor inside the programming. Otherwise, you'll burn something out. Being sensorless, we're fine just to swap a couple over. All right, guys, moment of truth. Ah, it moves, it moves. It moves, guys. Now we're gonna to have to sort this out here. This bearing is definitely working itself out. And what's gonna happen if I keep driving it like that, it's gonna come out and it's gonna kill the gears. But guys, it works. Like and subscribe. Do you know what I wanna do eventually? I wanna get another motor mount, cut this bearing support out. If you look here, look guys, it's got a bearing hole there. But because the motor's higher up and further away, I can't pick up on it. So now, this is actually flapping about a little bit. There, look. If you push on there, it's actually bending away from the motor mesh. So what I'm thinking is get one of these, cut off this bearing carrier and drill it into the chassis there so that it's got an extra support here with a bearing. The only thing I might have to do is take this link bar off and just move it forward. But that's not a problem because we did that on the other one. Just had an idea, guys. This drive cup that originally came off of the front here, that, that does fit perfectly over that shaft. So... All I've got to do is cut a little bit off, then I can put it over, screw it on, and that's going to keep the bearing in. I did think about putting in there an R-clip just to hold it in, but with this spinning round as fast as it's going to spin, I don't want to risk this pin coming out and taking out an eye. Also, while that's off, I want to extend that flat spot a little bit because where this pinion's on, the grub screw is actually on the round part and that's going to end up slipping. So I'm going to have to get a grinder out and just, just bring that flat spot there over more towards that way. Beautiful! Oh, check it out, guys. It's mounted. I mean, I'm definitely going to have to put another mount here to support it, but we can at least see if it works now. Oh, success. Oh, it moves. Oh, definitely needs a handbrake to hold it. smoking it's smoking guys guys it works but for some reason it's not quite getting the full rpm like the other one is i think the esc is probably going to need setting up so i'm going to do that make sure it's seeing full throttle the little light's not coming on at full throttle so it's definitely got more in it so next we're going to have a look to see how we can mount the servo for the handbrake so i've actually got no idea where to put it i mean the lever for it's here i don't know where to put it guys i mean i could put it there Hot glue it to the top of there. I mean, it's a bit of a bodge. It's not definitely not the right way to do it. Have the arm coming out this way. Linkage going over there. Maybe make a new one of these with a little dog leg on it. So that could work. Or do I try and mount it here somehow? I mean, there's not much room, but possibly work. I mean, I don't really want to put it up here if I can help it because I might need this to put some weight on there. If, you know, if the handbrake doesn't hold the car, then we're going to need to put a bit of weight on the back. So I want to keep this sort of area clear to do that. But I don't know, guys. I'm not really sure where to put it. I'm going to have a little look at it, try and figure something out. And then I'll put you back on. All right, I got it, guys. I'm going to put it here. I mean, probably not ideal, but I, I really don't want to have to go over here. I think all I've got to do is cut a little bit of this mount off here so it's not hitting on the tyre. And then I can put two holes in the chassis to screw this side on, hot glue the rest of it down, or maybe, if that's not enough, I could always make up another mount to come off of here and come down onto the battery box, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how we get on. But for now, I reckon a couple of holes here, a couple of posts, a couple of holes in the chassis, screw it on, cut this thing off, and then see how it holds up.
Well, it's in there. A little bit floppy. I don't have to make up a little mount to go across to here or... I'll tell you what though, there's a perfect little gap underneath the battery tray for the cable to go, so that's another result. Alright, so I'm going to leave it flopping for now. I might put a bit of hot glue on the bottom just to hold. I want to test the concept first. I want to make sure it works. I don't want to spend too much time making up all those amounts for it all, only for it not to work. So next I've got to go and find a linkage. Ah, look, I think this would make a perfect little cable tidy up. Alright, linkage. Let's see what we can find. The last linkage came from a TS4 end, so hopefully I might have another one kicking around. Oh, 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 oh! Ho ho! Check it guys! Alright, so let's see if we can get any of this lot here to work. This one here, what I used before, it looks to be a little bit long. I mean, I could hook that in there. And I guess we could cut it down. Alternatively, we've got this one here, which is already shorter. But that could possibly be too short. Let's try this one first and see what happens. Uh, just open that hole out on the servo horn slightly. I think it's going to be slightly a bit too short, guys, to be honest. I mean, we don't have to worry about the linkage geometry too much. I mean, normally we try and get everything to 90 degrees, but because this is only on and off, it doesn't really matter too much. All right, it might work. Let's see what happens. Right, so brakes open. Ho oh, ho! Brakes locked! Check it out! I mean, this servo is going to need a little bit more bracing, but it does work! Alright guys, I think she's good to go. For now, I'll just put a cable tie, zip tie across here just to hold the servo down. So that might actually be a permanent fix, we'll see. Not very professional, but eh, who cares. Suspension wise, it's pretty much decked onto the floor. So I'm going to put a few of these spacers in here just to, just to jack it up slightly. Better. All right, so let's give it one last test and then we're going to take it out and give it a burnout in the next video. The video's going on a bit now, so we're going to dedicate the next video to just making sure that we get enough power out of the ESC and then ripping a burnout and shredding a set of tyres just to see what happens. Like and subscribe. Right, that's handbrake on. Handbrake off. Ho oh, ho! It works. Look, handbrake off. Handbrake on. <laughs> Maybe we can do a handbrake turn. <laughs> handbrake turn works a trick. Not really enough to hold it. It's going to need a bit of weight on the back. And, and in here, guys, it doesn't work anyway. The floor's too slippery. And what happens, the tyres that have got the brakes on, they pick up all the dust. And the tyres that are doing the wheel spinning, they get all the dust off and suddenly get gripped. But outside, on the more rough surface, it actually works. All right, well, it's not really going fast enough. There's no way that's running flat out. I mean, this light's flashing on here. This isn't hitting full speed. So we're going to investigate in the next video and make sure to see, see what's going on, why it's not hitting flat out. So there you have it, guys. The car is pretty much finished now. I mean, we've got these steel plates here that we can put on the back to give it a little bit of weight to make the rear handbrake work. We've got to set the ESC up. Something's not quite right. It's definitely not going flat out. It's probably running at about 50% power, if that. So we're going to have a little play with that in the next video. Get this thing up to full RPM. And then we're going to rip a proper burnout and see if this thing can smoke a set of tyres as well as the rear-wheel drive burnout car. So yeah, that was a fun project, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little series. We're going to rip a few burnouts when it's thing, have a bit of fun with it and see what happens. So guys, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, smash the bell button so notified. See you soon. Bye.